ಪುನಃಗಾರ ಬಂದ ಮೋರ ಕ್ಷಮಾ ಕೋರೆ ದಾವ ಕ್ಷಮಾ ಕೋರೋ ಹೇ ಪ್ರಭು ತುಮಿ ರಹಮನ್ ರಹೀಮ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಆಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ವಾಟ್ಸಪ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೈ ಪೆರಿಯಾರ್ ಅಲಂ ಶಾ ಫ್ರಮ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರದರ್ ಪೆರಿಯಾರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಪೆರಿಯಾರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಹೌ can muslims coexist peacefully with hindus while allah hates kafirs and commands muslims in the quran to do jihad against their faith quran is indeed a terror manual against hinduism muslims want to abolish hinduism and convert hindustan into islamistan they want to fulfill the command of allah i fully support modi ji and amit shah ji for a muslim free hindu rashtra kick muslims out to pakistan or qabristan jai hind our hindu brother uh, brother pariyar has asked a very important question and is asking the question that how can muslims and hindus coexist peacefully while allah subhanahu wa taala knows billa he says that hates kafirs and commands muslims in the quran to do jihad against their faith there are about five six questions in this one long question the first is that how can muslims and hindus coexist when allah hates the kafir what is the meaning of the arabic what is the meaning of the arabic word kafir the arabic word kafir comes from the root word kufr which means to reject which means to hide So kafir means those who reject. I would like to ask a simple question to Brother Pariyar that if you have a company and there are hundreds of employees that you have and if your employee rejects the commandment that you have given him or the work you have given him what will you do? Will you praise him? Will you love him? Or will you dislike him? And mind you they are only employees. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He is almighty God. He has created all the human beings. More than seven and a half billion human beings today in the world that are there. All that came in the past. He is the creator. And then after he is the creator when he requests you to follow few of his commandments and you do not follow what do you expect him to love you? But natural. So he will not like you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you rightly said that he hates the kafir kafir means those who reject the commandment of almighty god so anyone who obeys the commandment of almighty god he loves them those who reject his commandment who disobey him he will not like them this is but natural so what is wrong in it and the second part of your first question is that quran says that we should do jihad with this kafir you are right if you read the quran the quran says in surah furqan chapter number 25 verse number 52 that do jihad with the quran against the unbelievers with the kafir here allah is advising us that jihad is the arabic word which means to strive which means to struggle unfortunately the media has promoted that jihad means something to kill or jihad only means that you go for a war this is not the right concept the real meaning of the arabic word jihad comes from the arabic word jihada which means to strive which means to struggle so jihad basically means to strive and struggle here allah is telling that you strive and struggle against the unbelievers those who reject the quran you strive and struggle with the quran that means allah is telling us to convey the message of the quran of the of allah subhanahu wa taala of almighty god to the unbelievers so what is wrong in that this is good that allah is telling to strive and struggle to convey the message the commandment of the creator <coughs> then the question asks quran is indeed a terror manual against hinduism let me give you an example that every country has a police force and they have laws in the country what you should do what you should not do and if you go against the law there are punishments which are mentioned every country has a law that if you rob there will be so and so punishment if you murder someone so and so is the punishment and if you cheat so and so is the punishment if you do fraud similarly quran 
is the future world constitution. It is the law book of our creator how a human being should lead his life. If you allow me to call a human being a machine, it is the most complicated machine on the face of the earth. The glorious Quran is the instruction manual for the human being, the do's and don'ts. And if this instruction manual, if this instruction manual to prevent people committing crimes has given a punishment for robbing or for murdering an innocent human being or for cheating, then why do you call it a terror manual? If you call it a terror manual, that means all the countries, the court of law, which has a constitution and where it says in the law book, the punishment for the crimes, then every country will have a terror manual. So it's a misunderstanding. It is the guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human beings about the do's and don'ts. And if you do not do certain things which are commandments of Almighty God, like how you have rules in the country, if you break a signal, there are punishments for it. So similarly, this is a book to prevent the wrongdoing by the human beings. It is a misconception that it is a terror manual. Actually, it's a manual for peace. If someone calls the law of the country as a terror manual, that means the person hasn't understood the law of the country. It is actually a peaceful manual. So that peace prevails in that country. If this law wasn't there in the country, the country would have been in chaos. Anyone who terrorizes you. So because of this law, peace is maintained. Similarly, this is the law book of our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let peace prevail throughout the world. In the next part, our brother Periyar says, that Muslims want to abolish Hinduism and convert Hindustan into Islamistan. They want to fulfill the command of Allah. Regarding a question that Muslims want to convert Hindustan into Islamistan, first let me tell you that the word Hindu is a misnomer. Who gave, how did this word Hindu come from? Where did it come from? Who gave this word Hindu? According to historical books, we come to know that the word Hindu is not present in any of the scriptures of Hinduism. According to Jawaharlal Nehru, in his book Discover India, he says the first time this word was used was in the 8th century. It is never found in any of the Hindu scriptures. It was first used in the 8th century when the Persians, when the Muslim Arabs came to India. And even the historians say that this word was given by the Muslims. So the word Hindu is given by the Muslims for the people living in the land of the Indus Valley. The real name of the religion, those who follow the Vedas, should be Vedantist. So this Hinduism is a misnomer. And really if you come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty God has only sent down one religion for the whole of humankind. It is later on that human beings kept on manipulating it and the moment the message got changed, Allah sent a new messenger with a new message to get the people to the straight path. So all the messengers of Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they taught nothing but submitting your will to Almighty God. And the religion of submitting your will, in Arabic we say Islam, Islam comes from the root word salam which means peace. It's also derived from the Arabic word silm which means submitting over to God. So Islam means peace acquired by submitting over to Almighty God. And anyone who acquires peace by submitting over to Almighty God is called as a Muslim. So here Muslims want all the human beings in the world, not only in India, the Muslims want all the human beings in the world that they should go and follow the commandment of Almighty God. They should worship only Almighty God and no one else because we love our brother human beings and we want them to follow the commandment of the Creator, Almighty God, which all the major religions, if you read the scriptures, all the major religions, the scriptures basic messages that you worship only one God, do not make images of God and worship Him alone and follow His commandment. The brother further says, that I fully support Modi ji and Amit Shah ji for a Muslim free Hindu Rashtra. Regarding as far as our Prime Minister Narendra Modi and our Home Minister Amit Shah is concerned, according to me, both these people, they do not follow the Hindu scriptures. 
they don't follow the Vedas. They are breaking the rules of their own scripture. What they are promoting is not Hinduism or Vedantism, they are promoting Hindutva, their own brand. And if you read the Vedas, there are many things that our Prime Minister and Home Minister are not following from the Hindu scriptures. They are killing people, they are torturing people, all this is against the scriptures. If you analyze and read the teachings of the Vedas, I can proudly say that I follow more of the teachings of the Vedas than Amit Shah and Modi ji put together. Because I have read the Hindu scriptures, I doubt whether Narendra Modi has read the Vedas. I doubt whether Amit Shah has read the Veda. And even if they have read the Veda, I doubt whether they have understood. And I don't think so, they practice. There are so many things that they violate. There is so much of anarchy going, so much of oppression going out in India, so much of innocent people are being killed on their advice, so much of cheating is there, so much of corruption is there. All these are against the teaching of Vedas. So if you want to judge a person only on the teachings of Veda, then Alhamdulillah, I, Dr. Zakir Naik, who is a Muslim, can proudly say that I follow more of the teachings of Vedas than Narendra Modi or Amit Shah. So, what they are doing is, they are taking the people away from the true teachings of Hinduism. And regarding your last statement that you said, that kick Muslims out to Pakistan or Kabrastan. Let us understand what is the meaning of the word Pakistan. Pakistan, Pak means sacred, holy, Stan means land, holy land. I am not referring to the Pakistan country or neighboring country. I am not, I'm not talking about that. But if you literally say that the Muslim should be kicked to Pakistan, to a holy land, that means you don't consider India to be holy? You don't consider India to be sacred? You don't consider India to be a good country? I being an India, I consider India to be a good country. It is few politicians who are changing the atmosphere and are are causing chaos in the country but as a country India was a very good country for many years it is a yet a good country there are some politicians who for their ulterior motives they are spoiling the name of the country and they are causing chaos and violence in the country so if you say that Muslims should be kicked out to a holy land again Pakistan Pak is sacred or pure something which is pure to a pure land you are not considering India to be pure? I am not talking about our neighboring country, Pakistan. And I remember when I met Dr. Israr Ahmed, he told me that Pakistan is everything but Pak. According to him, he said that the country Pakistan, the aim was noble, but the action, what they did is not correct. And he said that Pakistan is everything but Pak means Pakistan is everything but pure. That's his view. That's not my view. And kick the Muslims to Qabristan. It is every human being has to die. Allah says in the Quran, He gave life and He will cause you to die. Every human being, no one can save you. No Modi ji, no Amisha ji can save any human being. When Allah has destined you, the day you will die, you will die, no one can save you. If Allah wants to keep you alive, no one can kill you. So every human being is born in this world and he has to die. So every human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, they have to die. So my aim is to make the whole world a sacred place. A whole world a park place. Whole world. So all the human beings in the world should follow the commandments of Almighty God. And if you truly, regarding your first part of the question, that how can Muslims and Hindus coexist. The best way they can coexist that both of them should read the scriptures with understanding and at least agree to follow what is common. If the Hindus read the Vedas with understanding, if they understand Sanskrit and if they read and if the Muslims read the Quran with understanding and let us agree to follow what is common. What is different we'll discuss tomorrow. At least let us agree to follow what is common. The Hindus believe that Veda is the word of God. The Muslims believe that the Quran is the word of God. Let us come to common. Let us come to common terms. Let us agree to follow what is common in both these sacred scriptures. And when we do a comparative study, I have given a lecture 
on the topic similarities between Islam and Hinduism. And I have given various similarities. Number one is both the religions say that we should worship only one God. Both the religions say that you should not make any idols, any images of Almighty God. Both the religions say that the last and final messenger to come is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Both the religions say that when we pray, we should do sujood, we should do prostration. Both the religions say that we should give charity. Both the religions say that we should fast. There are many similarities. So why don't we agree to follow what is common? Why are we creating fictitious animosity? So those people who believe in getting the human beings together on the common platform are the real good human beings. Those who for the ulterior motives want for the personal benefit, they create the animosity so that they can get a benefit in this world. But in the hereafter, surely they'll be amongst the losers. So I request my Hindus and Muslim brothers of India that read the scriptures and let us at least agree to follow what is common. What is different, we can discuss tomorrow. And inshallah, if the Hindus and Muslims in India are united, we will be a superpower. India was a superpower a few centuries ago. India was a superpower. It was number one country in the world. If we go back and unite, go back to our scriptures and unite and follow it, inshallah again, we will be a superpower. Hope that answers the question.